treat tonight we have Adrian Espinosa he is well into it all he knows about it all uh, in my labs hypnotherapy remote viewing Skynet files cyborgs awakening um, alternate realities the matrix and how AI impacts all of this especially us it's gonna be epic anyway uh, today's intro is from Aaron Salem. The moment is the single. Go on iTunes, buy it. He let us use this for our Space Wolf research video. Check it out. But right now, we're going to Adrian Espinosa. Hey, Ryan. How's it going? Not bad, not bad, man. Um, we're live here. Is that cool? Yeah. Awesome, man. I'm so excited. I love it. I'm excited to talk to you. This is kind of like... What we're talking about tonight is, uh, it's just, you know, the, the, the majority of people just don't, um, I, I, I'm excited because the majority of people just don't believe that reality is augmented in that way. And this is kind of like a deadly, yeah. you know, restricted area of conversation. A lot of people don't like to talk about things like, um, well, tell us about Skynet files um, before we, we go any further. Okay. I think that's super cool. Well, uh, let me just give a little bit of background on myself. I, uh, I started out uh, in uh, sacred geometry in uh, Sedona, and um, I kind of ventured outside of, um, uh, you know, deeper into um, codes and stuff like that, and then I started wondering if the artificial intelligence goes a lot more deeper than that. You know, like my curiosity has always been um, looking deeper down the rabbit hole, you know, as you can, as you can say, I, uh, and then my curiosity just kind of lingered into different directions. And, um, you know, when it came to artificial intelligence, and then I learned about, um, my software, you know, and, and after I had my, uh, experience in Sedona, I moved to, um, California and I met a guy by the name of Alan, and he had a uh, what they call Linux software, which access files uh, in the matrix, which um, basically now he calls uh, Skynet. So now I was kind of interested in what it was like to uh, put sacred geometry along with a Linux software that he came up with, an yeah. idea, and he put it in a in an IRC network, um, which he put on uh, in a software for right now. But in October, he's going to be putting a bigger um, set together with his own um, software. So basically, um, what it is, is it accesses the matrix through codes and through programs that people believe that they've been um, people that have been abducted or people that have been part of different types of uh, my lab, uh, UFO, um, alien encounters, wherever that might be, um, it has access to those codes and those programs. So then what we do is we, we run those, pro those codes and those programs in my um, other software that I had, and you know, this is all part of, I guess you could say it's all part of the same thing, you know, what you call it Skynet or mm -hmm. you call it radionic. But it's kind of like a, it's like a whole combination of things that he put into the software. Mm -hmm. And so um, it has probably over a million different types of programs that you can go into. There's not just one or two programs. This, this software has over a million. 
And I was a little bit overwhelmed at first because I used to think, well, how am I going to learn this? Because there's so much research to do, you know, like um, along with, um, you know, artificial intelligence and, and using bots and programming cyborgs and and just different things like that, you know. And I used to think, well, how did he come up with this software? And I used to show my clients how it used to run and I would show them screenshots and they would say, well, how is this even possible, you know, or some people would be a little more on the skeptical side because they don't understand how universal energy works or how different types of software can work like that. I love that you call it universal energy. That's that's such a good statement. Sorry to interrupt you. I just, I couldn't agree more. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, um, that's basically all really is. I mean, it, it's all... You know, the Lemurians are the ones who created the software. Some people say it came from Atlantis. Some people said it came from the aliens. And then some people say it came from angels. Now, I don't know. Honestly, I can't tell you where it came from or how they created it. But I know that he put this whole combination of things into one software. And then after um, after a few months, after um, they learned about the software, they... I came into another guy by the name of Kevin, and he was uh, he introduced me to his software. So basically, what we did, we just joined forces, and we put it all together into one one software. And um, so now we're kind of networking with each other. And what what's so interesting about it is I never even heard that there was anything like this in in artificial intelligence. I used to think that you know, all you use is just codes because our body is made out of codes and frequency and universal energy. Mm -hmm. So what they did is they just, they turn around and they put it in a software. And yeah. that's basically, and then we just, he gave it a name, he called it Skynet. The reason why he called it Skynet is because it works with artificial intelligence. You know, it's, it's its own type of AI that they created. And, um, and the reason why is because, you know, they're, they're using a lot of bots, they're using a lot of uh, cyborgs, they're using um, avatars. Um, there's actually a gaming system that's on there that uh, people believe that they were part of this gaming system, you know, from their memories. Everything is being downloaded into the IRC, what people were thinking, and that's how the AI reads their thoughts. AI reads thoughts. You know, absolutely. And, and, I mean, absolutely. Actually, I couldn't agree with your comment more, though, about the AI and its its advancement and the, the technological level that it's actually assumed at this point. It's not what we're led to believe it is. Um, I know that you're also, I believe you're into gaming. I made that assumption. I don't know if it's true. Is that? Actually, I um, believe it or not, I am, I am not a gamer, but I can honestly say that since I've gotten into the software and I've gotten into Linux, I've, I have collected Linux ever since I was 18 years old. And I have a whole big box of software that I used to work with. And now I learned about Skynet and it has its own flash drive because, you know, I'm, wor I'm working with another software called Cyborg, you know, and mm -hmm. on that system, it has its own probably over close to 1 million different types of games. And now that I'm really looking behind the scenes on how that actually works, mm -hmm. I'm actually starting to get more and more into gaming. And it's so interesting because I've even got into more of the virtual reality, you know. And when I met Alan, he introduced me to this guy named Chase. He was a friend of his. I got really into the virtual reality and I said, well, why not put my software along with your HoloLens? And so when he did the HoloLens, he put it all together. Don't ask me how he did it, but somehow him and Alan were able to work together to put it together. And he didn't put it out on the market only because he knew that millions of people would buy it, his own, game, his own gaming system. Yeah. Because it was... Uh, a lot more more real than the actual virtual reality. This AI and gaming is almost a way of interaction. Yeah, 
Yeah. But this is what's really going on. I mean, this, you know, you've heard of um, quantum reality, but this is like augment reality. This is, um, this is what's really, really going on behind the scenes. I mean, you, once you look past the matrix and I, and I have seen past the matrix, some people said they've even seen the grid, you know, mm -hmm. where they've actually seen the code. Well, that's what I saw. I saw like a hallway of codes and I actually walked through it. No if you do way. it physically, this is so you, know, you cool. try to walk through a wall, chances are you're not going to be able to do it. Right. But if you put on the HoloLens and it's downloaded into your brain, then you're actually walking through the wall. This is and so interesting. Matter, you can put your hand right through the wall. A know? Adrian, I just had a podcast with an individual named Rob Gray, and he was telling me um, mm -hmm. about these interesting things that people are finding. He, he kind of likes to get into these, uh, you know, weirder than weird things and look into them. And it was like people were finding these stairs in the woods is what they were called. Mm -hmm. And it was like a wooden, mm -hmm. wooden made stairs and they would just kind of go up mm -hmm. into, and what, what people were, were experiencing is exactly what you're mentioning. They would kind of like walk up these stairs and what they were claiming is that <laughs> they would be like you're saying in this like hallway and um, walking, I think they call it, there's another name for it online, something like the basement or, ah, I wish I knew, I should have paid more attention to Rob. He was telling me it was like the basement files or I can't remember, but there's another thing that it, it's a lot like that movie, um, that, uh, I, I love. It was like the others or something, but it's not, <laughs> it's like one of my favorite, I can't believe I can't think of the name. He's, he does all my favorite horror films. Like, um, he did get out, he did, uh, but it was called. Anyway, it's his latest one. And it was like these people, it's like you have, there's like this alternate reality. Um, I, mm -hmm. I remembered the name of that movie. It's Us, which is so creepy. I'm like, it's like the others. It's like, no, it's Us. Um, but mm -hmm. it's like Jordan Peele, it's Us. And it's like, we have this alternate reality. And yeah. It and, and it's so inter interesting, you know, that's that augment reality that I was talking about. Like, uh, I, you know, I was so addicted to it that I just wanted to keep doing it over and over and over when I was in California. And, um, you know, he had his own business, of course. He had his own team, his computer team, computer whiz people. But I just wanted to do it, like, over and over and over, you know. Like, I didn't want to make him feel like I was taking advantage. But then, you know, I had something else to bring to the table when I came up with this other software. So that, that's why he was willing to share it with me. Um, I actually had multiple things to bring to the table at that time and say, hey, why don't we just do a trade? You know what I mean? Call it good. I mean, I still had to come up with a couple of thousand for the other software, which I'm still making payments on that. Um, but all the money that I've spent in the past, I do feel like, uh, Ryan, I felt like it was all worth it because all the people that have never heard of it, that we're bringing to the forefront now, people, everyone's lives are changing. Right. We're starting to see them change, you know, even including my own. I mean, at the beginning, when I first had my awakening, you know, I had, uh, game stalkers. I had, um, cyber genetic systems that I, that I couldn't understand that were attacking me. I had, um, I had all kinds of weird things that were going on, supernatural, that I couldn't explain. I hear Anthony Zender talk about it, or I hear about James Ring talk about it, or Peter, or anybody. It always brings back that comfort to me, knowing that I'm not the only one that is experiencing these things. These are actually real things that are happening. And um, so, you know, um, I think it, it, it brought me a lot of comfort it brought me a lot of peace and comfort knowing that there's something I can turn to that would help me. And not just me, but other people too. You know, realizing that there's actually a lot more out there that, that can help us that's mm. artificial intelligence. Absolutely. You know, and, and then be willing to share that with the, with the public, you know. Absolutely. And it's so interesting that you call yeah. it Skynet and that you, I think you called it also like people have actually seen it because 
I kind of dabble into like some weird things and I was doing this thing with a guy where we were out researching another researcher. We were way out in the middle of nowhere in the middle. And you're from Utah. That's where I used to live. So props to that. This was in Utah, Mm -hmm. um, out in Mm -hmm. just BFE of the state. And we saw this, what I can only explain, Adrian, it looked like if, uh, you had a grid of the, those green lasers, like, mm-hmm. like just coming down onto like the sagebrush and the rocks and everything else. And we literally like ducked down with the sagebrush and the rocks and we're like trying not to move as this thing came down because you could see it kind of like rippling over the landscape as it was like gridding. And it's so or like uh, like a net. It's just I don't know if that's related or if that's just totally like coincidence. But it just it kind of seemed like there is this alternate like things have kind of been put together in a matrix like you said like a uh squared um Mm -hmm. compartmentalized like everything like google Mm -hmm. earth everything needs to be where it needs to be like exactly exactly and you know and i was pretty skeptical at the time too when i used to do um some of my shows uh back in the past but now i'm very much a believer only because when peter used to talk about and i'll just kind of explain how, you know, he was talking about these video games and real life characters that they were real. I started becoming kind of skeptical before I got the software, but now I'm not skeptical because every client that I've come across have had those experiences. And they weren't even they weren't even even part of the show. They didn't know anything about Peter. They didn't know anything about the software. All, I just let them talk. And Boom, you know, they they revealed everything. That's... Everything they saw about these video game characters, mm-hmm. all their memories, just everything in general. You know, I mean, the way he just stated it, it was like incredible, you know. That's awesome. And I'm not a gamer. I'm really not. I'm, I've tried in the past, you know, like, and just epic fail. Just not my cup of mm-hmm. tea. And... And Mm -hmm. I I had fun. I had really a lot of fun interacting with the game. Like we're talking about though, just that interaction, that augmented, like you, I think you Mm -hmm. called it. Yeah. It's really that proximity. Yeah. Yeah. That proximity to the, to the virtual reality. And, and for sure, I noticed that, um, with, I don't know, it, it, it could be, it could be that gamers are more i don't know what to call it but like you know some of my friends that were much better at gaming than me and spent a lot more time like they would point things out Mm -hmm. that i couldn't see in the software obviously i wasn't either yeah i wasn't either i mean but honestly when i came into the awakening now i'm starting to see the reason why they are because Mm -hmm. it, it escapes you out of this reality into another reality and you are a part of that reality, and everybody wants to be part of that reality to escape this reality, because this reality is not real in a way. The real reality is that reality that people want to experience, you know, mm-hmm. and that's why everybody's so crazy about technology, about Skynet, about um, talking about supernatural things, people that have experienced things, but more and more people are coming out to actually talk about these things rather than be afraid to talk about it, you know. And I think that's very important, you know, and and any conversation and anything that they're holding in, I think people should be very open about it because we're so boxed in, you know. Right. We are. We're totally boxed in. And and the, Mm -hmm. you know, like you said, I think that's so, I mean, people are like blown away by horror film like us or or like Get Out or any of these that are dabbling into things that are areas people don't like to talk about, like secret societies or like strange family cults. Like with, um, and then like with this, with uh, us, it's literally like pointing out that we live in a matrix, but they've turned it into a horror movie. But the reality yeah. that we live in, like you said, the reality that you live in, it's just not doing it for a lot of people. No, no, it definitely is not. I mean, it's not working. It. It used to work. The old things that did work are the old things that don't work anymore. And this is the reason why artificial intelligence has to keep upgrading just like we do as humans. And I feel like um, as we are connected to that, to that source of 
what you call artificial intelligence, Skynet, or whatever it is, you know, I feel like we have to go with that because everything is upgrading, you know, as we upgrade every year, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. AI upgrades every year. So um, I do feel like we have to catch up to speed in the technology, you know. Right. And um, and, and let go of the, what, what is not real reality anymore. You know, and, and that's this reality. That's this, this is what's not working. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But what is working is the real reality is what I believe. We're getting to that point, you know. And um, getting back to, I'm, I'm interested in asking you some questions about some things that I don't know as much about as I wish I knew. And um, some of those are things like, I mean, a lot of people know about my labs. That's like for those listeners that don't know, that's a military laboratory. My where I really want to okay. head where I really want to head into this because I, I recently read a work of fiction, but it was so well written that to me, a lot of times works of fiction, in my opinion, like The Matrix, uh, some of these movies that are just beyond real, like Avatar, um, trying to get a point across. Um, I, anyway, this was about military shape, the mili mi shapeshifters in the military. Um, and, mm -hmm. and then, you know, because I'm really interested in shapeshifters and that type of thing. And I read this book and it was well written. And, and then I realized that there is like this whole other subculture of military shape shifting processes and, and, and a process to that. And, and I wanted to ask you about other things like, like, well, I don't want to overwhelm, but project umbrella, monarch and then the 13 cube um but the shape shifting mm -hmm. the shape shifting process and how that's related to this other reality and and what is the acio um acio is an alien intelligent organization um that um that controls um any art or uh, any kind of um astral terrestrials that come to our planet they are the ones that are um controlling um you know our universal um monitoring you know they monitor extra terrestrials that come here on our planet in other words you know whether it be reptilians um palladians whatever they are that's coming here they're the ones that are keeping track of all that like watching it. and they are they're watching, right? Yeah, they, they are the ones that are trying to uh, make sure that nothing is being exposed. And I think the reason why they're doing it is because they know that as humans, we are not ready to uh, to know the truth. You know, we're they they know that we know that we're that we're not going to ever change as a human because we can't accept the fact that this reality is not our real reality. We think it's the real reality, but it's not. It's the it's the um, quantum reality. It's it's uh, like virtual reality, but it's the quantum reality. So it's but a, the but the authentic reality is the real reality. Okay, so it's kind of like an ascension problem for the species in a way. Like we 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 don't want. It's like right. We don't want to let go of the terrestrial or what we believe is real, um, and like around us and kind of level up right but i think there's more to the story there because sometimes i wonder if it's because you know we have so much um dna when it comes to the reptilians and they have somehow they're trying to I don't know if they're going along with the reptilians or if they're working with the reptilians, but I, I, I do know that there's a contract there that they're keeping, that they're not telling us, you know. So there's, some, there's something very real going on with that particular race or species, at least from your perspective. Is there, with, with all this Jeffrey Epstein stuff that's coming out, sorry to kind of like go into something a different direction, but with all this strange, okay. like, all this strange like kid stuff going on, I can't remember where mm -hmm. I heard it. It was from another remote viewer. And they were talking about how I believe you were in on a remote view looking for kids in a location. I just can't remember what the location was. I think it was either like a base of some sort or 
Um, and I know that you do a lot of projects, so that's like a really like, but that really like. Oh, you mean when I was when I was on my mission? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I talked about how I was in this um, underground bunker, and I saw these children, and they were being used. Um, you know, um, and I don't know how they were being used, but you know, like I remote viewed and went in and found out that. Somehow I was tied in with the, um, my, maybe it was my clone that I was seeing. Um, somehow we were trapped in this space or whatever. And there was this one room where there were these children and they were being used. And it stunk so bad that I was just like, ooh, I can't go back there, you know. Um, but this had to do with like the uh, the Nazis and all that, you know. Yep. Basically. Okay. So like Antarctica, yeah. Antarctic type views views mm -hmm. of, views of antarctica mm -hmm. and you know i had a recent um a, a friend of mine that i met on a project and he recently went to antarctica and was like trying to like find in real time like um in this reality trying to find uh entrances and underground bases and things like that and he was explaining just that place is just very different and you know it, yeah. it doesn't fit the norm for it's just i mean it's immense. It's immense. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. But um, yeah. yeah, that that view that I heard about when you were on your mission that was really really cool. I thought that was epic. Um, the other I want I also wanted to I wanted to ask you, Adrian, about the thirteen cube and what you could tell our listeners about that. That kind of drew my attention. Well, it's kind of interesting. Um, there's different um, interpretations when it comes to the thirteen cube. You know, um, Stuart Swerdolo wrote a book on the 13 cube that she called, and this goes way back to uh, Monarch. And when I watched the um, the movie The Cube, I watched the Zero Cube, and I really liked that movie because it makes a lot of sense how they were putting people in a cube and they were actually torturing them to actually test out their skills as super soldiers mm -hmm. and they were trying to figure out if they can get out of the cube without being killed through these traps and they were using these agents and they were actually controlling the, the grid with the with ai with the computer and they were basically um using different traps to torture people now what's so interesting is if you relate that to stewart's book when he talks about these different types of programs, you know, that people were in, you know, whether it be um, the primanus or the butterfly or the scorpion or the, uh, the dolphin um, or even, the, you know, the, the bear cave and all the stuff that he talked about in his book, um, this all makes sense to me. This def definitely makes all make sense because this is all tied in with um, how they were programming people. Mm -hmm. You know, through whether it be through Monarch or through um, Montauk, you know, they talk about how people were being tortured, you know. Yeah, Montauk, I, I, that place, you know, it is among the creepiest, I think, just because, just because of the, like you're saying, the stories that you hear about it. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it it's like uh, everything. And, and as far as like from the perspective of, you know, what they're trying to do is the entire gamut. You know, I've heard of like uh, wild stuff like these. What are the critters? Like w I, this is one that I had to ask you, like where I'm told where they keep the critters is like one where somebody was talking about there's like a critter area. And by critter, they just meant mm -hmm. like, you know, not necessarily, you know, could you go explain that a little bit? That was intriguing a little. Okay. So in every project that they did, um, when they would use um, AI, and, and this is going to sound a little creepy, what we talked about how they use different programs like the, the Wolf uh, Project. Mm -hmm. they, were actually trans they were actually transforming a human gene with a wolf, and they were putting them in these different types of role plays, like I call it scripting programming. Okay. And they would take and they would put them in a script and they would play it out a role. 
with a part of the mind control to test their skills and their abilities as a super soldier and send them off on different projects. That's basically what they did. You know, they, this is on file. They've been downloaded. And anybody that says that this sounds crazy, I mean, just look at uh, a base elemental real soldier. And, you know, I take, for example, my yeah. father-in-law, my late father-in-law that just passed away. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, he was a Navy SEAL. And I was like, mm -hmm. you know, and this is like base reality. And I'm thinking, holy cow, if this is possible, you know what I mean? If like the reality of mm -hmm. what could be is just so, it's, it's amazing, you know, it's perfectly possible. It is amazing. I mean, even, even in, um, if you can interact with them, your own avatar with the software of Skynet, and you can go in and actually destroy ships by interacting with some of these super soldiers. That's even more amazing. It is. It's it, this. You're interacting with your own avatar, right? And that's like what. That's what's exactly like. You're training. It's like the, <laughs> the training is so intense, and you know, uh huh. The the whole avatar thing. You know that I had a really when I I, I spoke with James Rink and mm -hmm. I had a really hard time putting my mind around the avatar until I realized that like actually in this reality we are nothing more than an avatar, we mm -hmm. and not even that mm -hmm. great a one. I mean, yeah, we live for a long time, but but we're pretty. You know what I mean? We don't have like you know the the it's it's a pretty bit it basic. What I mean by basic is we're an organism that's fairly frail and easy to, you know, and, and easy, exactly. to, easy to kill, succumb to viruses, all these things. And yet, you know, the human body is capable of like you, you watch the Olympics or you watch like it's capable of stuff that is practically impossible in this base reality and still we can do it. So that to me says that there's a lot more going on in this other augmented reality through... You know, definitely. Uh, yeah, the, I, I want to know on the super soldier thing. It's 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 just so cool. Like the operations and and sorry, I, I kind of I'm tangential. I went off when I talked to James Rink. That was the hard part for me to get around is the avatars and the super soldier, like the the missions and the the situations that they're placed in are beyond ridiculous, like difficult. Yes. Yes. Could, well, I was watching a video, and I just wanted to share that it may get a little off top, maybe not, but... Oh, I'm down. Yeah. I was watching a video, you know, I'm a big horror fan, and one of my biggest characters that I really liked was uh, always Michael Myers. I'm mm -hmm. a big fan with Michael Myers. It's so interesting, because when I was watching the video, they were actually sending him off on missions as a super soldier. And this is going to be interesting because in the video, it wasn't just him as a super soldier. They used many different types of super soldiers to go on missions. They even had the Punisher. He was on there. Mm -hmm. They had some of the people from Mortal Kombat. He was on there. Um, when they put it, when they combined all that stuff, it really made me starting to think. How did they get this information and who put this together? Exactly. Because yeah. There has to be someone that already knew what they're doing, you know? I mean, the way the way Hollywood mimics, I mean, everything in Hollywood right now is about superheroes, aliens. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. it's, you know, like it's it's marvelous, <laughs> you know, it's all superheroes and aliens and it's even the horror films are dabbling in things exactly. like the Matrix. Exactly. And people don't see it. You know, like, why would they make a video of sending Michael Myers on a super mission to find something? Mm -hmm. that, that's working for the Umbrella Corporation. I mean, hello, what is the Umbrella Corporation? That's all monarchs. It is. Yep. And, and there's nothing that, nothing that escapes it. At least, exactly. <laughs> or else they probably wouldn't have called it the umbrella. <laughs> it's it's exactly. it's like mind blowing. Like this latest movie, I think they just shut it down. And this, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna raise my hand guilty. I guess somebody bootlegged it, and I had the opportunity to watch it. And it's super politically uh -huh. motivated. It's about 
Um, it's about Hollywood elite, liberal Hollywood elite hunting. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they called them deplorables in the movie. And I don't like to pick either side. If somebody saw me on the street, they'd probably call me a Trumpster. But I don't like to pick either side. And <laughs> even even being categorized as that, even though I don't consider myself that, being categorized as that, uh-huh. I wanted to see the movie because I'm like, this is crazy accurate. Like, how is a movie coming out that even... And then the way they shut it down, it's almost like, oh, it'll come out eventually. But uh-huh. later... And, and this is what's so freaky is this is, and it was about, you know, this is kind of brings us back to like what we believe possibly could be happening with elites in real time. And it's, um, it's kind of crazy that Hollywood is mimicking, if not programming and downloading us and we're not even aware of it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. People don't really know. I mean, they, all they know is what they see in front of them and they're just like, it's right in our faces. Come on, how can you not know? I know, like the, the truth is right there. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> Even commercials, you, you'll see all this Illuminati stuff on commercials. The Taco Bell commercial with the all-seeing eye at the top of the pyramid at the end, like dong, and then the bell. And people that are familiar with exactly. the bell, yeah, the bell. Why do you think they have Mason Temple? They're not just there to look pretty, you know. Right, right. They're doing, yeah, they're not just playing Scrabble. It's the. They're not just playing checkers. Come on. <laughs> it's 4D chess. It's like. You know, there's something going on in there. Oh, yeah. And there's, and I want to, like, the, the interesting thing is that, you know, a lot of this is really happening. And I think this Epstein thing, mm-hmm. nobody can believe that somebody with that much money and that much power and that much pull was into that would do something like that would do something like that and it's almost like par for the course um because that's just another distraction you know what i mean yeah i mean have you seen that other island oh i can't remember the name of the musician uh it's a it's a it's a hip-hop musician she's a female anyway her island has It's in the shape of a baby fetus, and then it has the all-seeing eye, like, literally perfectly done in tile, I think, or something, in the center of the island. It's really intense. Uh And, you know, it's not that... I don't think that, you know, you don't want to go too... But in all reality, there's just too much symbolism in a lot of these Hollywood... and, And even in video games, that video games are more real. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what I was trying to get across to about my software because um, video games are just as real as our reality as the other reality. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it is, it is definitely part of our reality. I could see that. I really can. Absolutely. And I think the awakened souls know that too. Just people that, you know, you talk to a random person and they'll tell you. This is what I experienced. The TV was actually talking to me. Mm -hmm. And I've even had the television talk to me once. It says, make sure that you close the gate when you walk out. And I was like, how did the TV know that I had a gate in the backyard? Right? Well, and that's a lot of the thing. Because, I mean, a lot of people have their TVs going all the time. I do it all the time. And just as a reminder, sometimes I forget to turn it off or whatever. And, Mm -hmm. and then like your peripheral, you're really not paying attention to the TV and then Mm peripheral, like you said, peripherally, you hear it say something to you directly. Say something. Yeah. 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 It said, make sure you close the gate when you're way out. Right. And I was like, what? Yup. And I was just going, I was just going to open up the gate on my way out. Wow. (laughs) And see, that's a super positive one. I've heard of negative ones too. That's a really positive one, which is awesome, Adrian. I've heard of like I've heard yeah, of people having it negative even called ones. My name. It did. It said my name. That's awesome. I heard uh-huh. of. I so heard Adrian, of, it said make sure you close the gate on your way out. That's cool. There was a family, <laughs> a, a, a friend of mine who investigates like paranormal stuff. He got a, 
a call. Uh huh. And there was a family, and there was multiple researchers that went out on this. Um, and basically, this family said, "We're being talked to through this TV." And the guys were like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Um, I'll tell you his name. His name is Dave. Dave Rosenfeld. And he's like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. And they're like, "The problem though is the TV is not plugged in." And this TV had, for all, uh, the only way you could describe it is you could see like shadows coming in and out of it they looked like figures you know and it wasn't plugged Mm -hmm. in the wall Mm -hmm. it wasn't plugged in the wall and and it's almost like that energy just imagine what a tv that is plugged in the wall can do (laughs) you know what i mean it's all energized (laughs) so i've seen that happen and then my radio went off and it started playing christian music i was feeling really down that day and i was just like what do I do? Do I sit down and I pray? And it came back in, and I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, damn it, I'm just giving up. I'm giving up on God, I'm giving up on universal God, whatever. Went outside, went back inside, and lo and behold, it was playing Christian music. And my, my radio was unplugged, and I was the only one that could hear the music go off. My lawyer friend couldn't hear it. Whoa, that's cool. That's really cool. Well, I believe that ghost so in the machine like, stuff. What the yeah. hell? Go on. I've, I've heard of people. So, you know. Yeah, I've heard of people that lose family members and then they have radios or, like you're saying, like radios or fo- they'll get a phone call or, or something. Mm-hmm. Some, somehow an electric device will interact with something that shouldn't happen. And um, there's a lot of cases of it. I mean, if you like go for a fun little Google there search. Is. Yeah. There's tons of cases of like human mm-hmm. interaction, the ghost in the machine. It's AI. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. and I hate that term. I hate artificial intelligence, but it, I guess it's what we call it. But I mean, it's like, it's intelligent. Yeah. It, calling it artificial. It's is, energy. Yeah. Calling it artificial is very demeaning in a way because it is mm-hmm. so powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a it's universal a way energy. for people to comprehend. You know, it's like putting it's like putting a label on it. Well, and I find that people always try to put anything that's not them, like lower than them. So, oh, right. it's it's artificial intelligence. It's not it's not real intelligence. Yet it's smarter. Right. Yet it's smarter than us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it knows what we're thinking. You know. Oh, it totally knows. I mean, precognition Half just... the time, we yeah. don't even know our own thought, how we're thinking. True. Let alone them knowing how we think, you know, the real thinking, the real, the real universal energy. Yeah, you hop on your laptop and it knows what you want before you even, you know, you, you even tell it what you're wanting. You're, oh, I'm, I, yeah. want, I want to search for this. Like this guy was, yeah. like my neighbor was scanning his... Uh, his uh, thing, you know, the, the scanner, you know, the thing that you scan it with with your watch when you check out. Mm-hmm. And he says, it just bobbles my mind to think, you know, like, it, I mean, his eyes still went big. He goes, it, it just, I can't get across my mind how how advanced we've become, you know. It's it's moving fast and it's moving quick. And it's yeah. uh, it's going to be interesting to see where it heads. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, you also help a lot of people through other means. Um, I wanted to, you know, have have you at some point like tell people where they, you know, they can like see your work or see your opinions and all that online. Um, okay. Are you still doing the like, you know, websites or, or you know, social media or podcasts, things like that? Well, um I do have a website um, for people that want consultations. Um, it, it's called forceversuspower.com. And, um, and I do, do have a podcast that I do every once in a while called Astromind 2012. Mm-hmm. And you can go to Block Talk Radio to hear my podcast. Um, and I do every once in a while still do videos, you know, every once in a while I'll still do sessions and I'll let people know, you know, what's really going on out there so that people know, um, so they can catch on to it. And then when they do catch on to it, they're just like, okay, I want to know what's happening with me. Right. I want to know if my mind is just really playing tricks with me 
or if I'm really experiencing this avatar body. Exactly. Or am I really experiencing this X in body or whatever it is, whatever that is, that mission is. Or I've even had people come to me and claim they were werewolves. Mm-hmm. No judgment here. No judgment at all. I've seen people actually shape shift mm-hmm. in front of my eyes. I mean, I saw uh, a woman turn into a, uh, it looked like a cat. I wasn't sure. You know, she was a shaman. Mm-hmm. And it was coming down a hill and it grew into almost like a big lion. Wow. You know, and um, so how am I just to judge someone else when I already know the truth, when I already know that this is not the real reality that we're living in? And so this is why there is just no judgment at all. I mean, a lot of my friends, they still don't understand, you know, like when my friend will mention to my friend Eric, he'll say, oh, you know, Eric, I've been abducted by aliens. And he'll sit there and roll his eyes and he'll say, oh, here we go again. You know, it's it's the skepticism because we don't want to face the real reality of what is to come or what is our reality now. Mm -hmm. And um, this is the reason why I like to get the information out there for those people that haven't awakened to that reality. Because they're thinking, they're still thinking that this is their reality. You know, if if you don't become rich, you won't be successful. If you, you know, you don't have a, a nine-hour job, you won't be successful. Mm-hmm. You, uh, you know, and it's not something that is going to be a long-term thing. No, it's it's so like we pro- all it's like have to come to that realization. Right, it's like programming by covet means. Like if I don't have that shiny object, I won't be. I can't be happy. Right. I can't be happy. And that, that just keeps you right. down. That's like slavery, you know? Totally. Right, that's where it keeps you in the matrix. Man, so awesome that you've like taken time to hang with us and talk to us, Adrian. Um, thank you so much, man. It's it's awesome. And um, definitely want to... Thank you wanna, for allowing me on your show. Yeah, absolutely. Stay in touch. And next time I'm in Utah, we'll have to like uh, see if we can, uh, you know, chat for a sec. Super cool. That um, would be wonderful. Well, yeah, thank- and uh, again, you can go to my website at www.forceversuspower.com and if you want like a consultation with me explaining about what I do and how I can help you and uh, feel free to hit me up anytime. You're the man. Thank you, Adrian. Appreciate you. Have a great night. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Well, that's interesting. It's definitely a possibility with my lab control, hypnotherapy, remote viewing, Skynet files, um, organizations like he was speaking about, the uh, ACIO, um, this augmented reality that seems to be kind of pushed on us, at least by Hollywood and the like, and video games. Uh, There could be a lot more to it, especially when you realize the consequential makeup of artificial intelligence and how that can draft into our lives a whole new reality that we can engage with with these electronics and it's it's really kind of uh, transhumanism at its very finest I really appreciate having Adrian on he has a great understanding of how AI is incorporated in so much of what we do each day and um, it was kind of nice to uh, hear a new perspective If you haven't gone already, please go to HeroParanormal.com, check out our gear, Uh, feel free to donate to the podcast, you become an insider, which means you get all kinds of podcasts, some of which aren't listed, you would get those. In addition, go to Space Wolf Research, which is just a project we're doing in Utah. It is a um, pretty fun thing. And you're also able to uh, check out what's going on there. We uh, posted up a video, and that's spacewolfresearch.com. Thank you so much for listening to the Hero Paranormal Podcast. Until next time, keep your eyes to the skies, feet on the ground, but take a look around. Time machine, sir. I feel like it need visine. Blast off, blast off, blast off, blast off. Come blast off in my time machine, sir. I feel like it need visine.